for any singer who's great at belting but not so great at mixing. You find yourself pushing your belt up too high because you can't seem to flip over into mix and it's killing you slowly. It's just as important when you're learning how to mix to know what not to do and what sounds wrong as it is to know what to do and what sounds right. So we're gonna demonstrate real quick what you might be sounding like right now and then we're gonna show you how to fix it. Acting like you're brilliant, but you don't know. Yeah, you don't know. <laughs> Thanks so much, Nikki, for being the goat and, ah, and trying uh, yeah. to fail at mix. <laughs> it's hard when you know mix to fail, and she did a good job at failing. <laughs> so if you sound like that or something like that, that is not the move, okay? That's not how we're trying to sound when we mix. So we're gonna give you two very key and valuable exercises right now to work on so that you can sound like this. You're acting like you're pretty and but you don't know. Yeah, you don't know. So the first thing that we're gonna do is called the big siren. Tara? Pig siren. No, not to be confused with the little siren. <laughs> So you're gonna start on any note that you want that's comfortable for you, okay? I like F, F's good for me. And I'm gonna go as high as I then can go up top, moving through all of my registers as smoothly as I possibly can. And then I'm gonna go back down to whence I came, all right? I'm gonna start here. It's fun for me. Did you guys feel the rise as she went up there? Almost like a, like when you go on a roller coaster or something, it's like, Ooh. The suspense. Yes. Now, I will tell you this. It's easy to get stuck staying here. Like you really don't want to move from the bottom. Uh, you really want to stay down there. You got to move because if you don't, you're going to run out of breath. So keep it moving. Don't stay at the bottom. And you don't want to go so fast also that you're missing the opportunity to feel where your voice is transitioning. To give you a visual, this is what it's like. It's like taking this orange, which is your chest voice right here, and then you're slowly incorporating the green into the orange, and you see how it incorporates, right? They're both separate, but yet they're in the same beaker. That's exactly what mix is like. You have your chest voice, then you have your head voice that's slowly being poured into what already exists as your chest voice. And before you know it, as you go up, you end up with more head voice, more green. But then as you come down off of that top end, you are taking away the head voice. So you're going to see it being removed from that beaker, if you will, and you end up back where you started with complete orange or complete chest. That is the perfect way to exercise all of your registers and really feel where the mix is taking place. One thing I will note, and this is sort of like getting really gritty into the science of mix here, hence the lab coat, is if you note on the piano where you feel that incorporation happening the most, where you feel the most insecure mm -hmm. about where you stand registerically, that's the part that needs massaged the most. So I would then take our second exercise, which is the siren slide. Yes, which we're gonna explain right now. And then I would really massage those few notes where you feel the most insecure. Lean into that insecurity. I can't tell you how many students I've had that will not go there simply because they're scared to crack Ugh. or scared that it's not gonna sound good. In order to make it sound good, you have to go there. You have to sound bad first. Right. It gets worse before it gets better. So True. yes, you're going there, you're sliding, and you feel like it's gonna sound horrible, keep going. Embrace the goat. Yeah. <laughs> so the next exercise, as Nikki said, is the siren slide. We're gonna get to that right now. Do not do this before you feel comfortable with the big siren. It's important we did it in this order for a reason. This one takes more discipline and more control. scrunch there in order to keep the sound forward because if you don't it's gonna go into head voice it's gonna do this I really want 
to go up there like that. But in order to keep the mix, I have to do. It's gotta be nasal, it's gotta be forward, otherwise it's gonna fall back. That's an easy note for my head voice. So you don't have to mix that high, that's a G below high C right now, okay? But I went through easily C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp. That's all the way through the money notes, okay? Now, that's not to say that you shouldn't also be able to belt some of those notes. But when we're trying to mix, we don't want to rely only on our belt to get the notes in songs that we need to sing. Sometimes mix is appropriate. Sometimes mix is needed. And mix also gives you flexibility. You get to maneuver it. You've heard Tori Kelly. You've heard Jesse J. And you're like, oh my goodness. Because they're so good. But if yes. you think about it, what they're really good at is their transitions yes. and their control. Preach. And mix helps you to have that. Absolutely. So this type of mix is the equivalent of that beaker or that graduation of head voice into chest, like right? A it's slow build. Yes, yeah. it's an arc or it's like a swing. If you want to know how to hit a mixed high note without any leading notes, just straight nail on the head type of approach, click on this next video.